Hi, welcome to this episode in which we will talk a little bit about the intertrial phase consistency or coherence and we will see how we can um, apply this on our data or any other uh, data sets in the same manner that we are using the sine frequency uh, analysis. So basically to apply intertrial phase consistency if I'm not using baseline and um, yeah I'm building on the last video so please if you didn't check that go ahead and check the time frequency analysis because I'm using the same function. So if we get rid of the baseline uh, part we can go ahead and enter this uh, function and I'm not going to run this because I just want to focus on the differences between time frequency analysis and intertrial phase consistency uh, in such a way that I'm not going to go through all the code again you can check this in the other video and I'm just going to focus on this part uh, of the analysis so in this part when we are estimating the time frequency we are now specifying that we need uh, to estimate the interstitial phase consistency so you can basically when you are calling this function you can send another variable with uh, data specifying the method uh, to be ITPC which is uh, the abbreviation for interstitial phase consistency okay here we will check uh, that this is the method and the output will be different so instead of estimating the power we will be estimating the full uh, for your uh, spectrum so the thing is we will return a complex uh, value so we'll be returning the Fourier coefficient so we will have uh, the, the ability to extract the magnitude information and the phase information uh, as well so and then we continue uh, with the estimation of the of the uh, time frequency plot and after that what we have what will happen here is that when you have your complex values uh, in the full uh, resolution of the time frequency I need to get the single of this because I'm here just reducing uh, the output you may get rid of this if you would like I'm just here trying to do this uh, for memory uh, issues if you are doing this for a huge matrix and then I'm accessing the Fourier uh, spectrum and putting uh, putting this inside of F and here just checking the number of trials because I'm gonna use this uh, as a normalization factor later on and here I am just uh, taking uh, the complex vectors and dividing by the magnitude of each one of them this would basically get rid of all the magnitudes and make all of them ones so if you have a magnitude a vector of magnitude 2 and you divide this by 2 then you will have a magnitude of 1 so we are basically unifying all the magnitudes of all of our complex vectors to be ones so this is the basic idea unify the magnitudes to be ones and just focus on the phase values because you are testing the phase coherence not really the magnitude at this point I'm gonna talk about this in detail in a minute but I just want to show you the code first and here I'm summing over all the complex vectors of magnitude ones such that we will end up with uh, a sum uh, a summation a result from that it's uh, like a summation of all the vectors and then I'm getting uh, the average so after we sum we divide by n so basically taking the average and then uh, I'm taking uh, the magnitude of this average vector and the very nice thing about this is that the average uh, vector will have a magnitude that will reflect the phase coherence and we will see why uh, with uh, some counter examples such that we can use examples of uh, using real data and see that this is actually intuitive that how this magnitude is reflecting this average uh, value uh, the magnitude of the average vectors is actually reflecting uh, the phase consistency and here I'm just getting rid of the singleton uh, dimension and um, will have our 
a final result and then we can return this with the same dimensionality as we did in the time frequency plot so instead of now looking at power uh, and the color bar was whose power it will be uh, inter trial phase consistency and that's the whole difference uh, coding wise between them so let's look at that like the concept itself so what is happening with this one so um, with the phase consistency we are looking at something different so with the phase consistency let's recall that we have a very elegant Euler's form and it looks like this it's m e to the power of i uh, theta and this equals cosine uh, theta uh, plus i sine uh, theta and all of this is multiplied by the same uh, magnitude okay and we have seen this and we have seen that this is a complex wave and we have seen that this is corresponding to our rotation actually so if we look at this on our vectors like this our nice lively vectors like that well it's almost like if you have a vector and the magnitude the length of that uh, part here is m so the magnitude of this vector is m and it's rotating it's rotating with angle theta with angle theta okay so that's how to visualize it okay and what we are trying to do here we are trying to think about different trials right we are doing a inter trial phase consistency so we have trial 1 and we have trial 2 we need to get the phase of this point and see how consistent they are among different different trials right is this phase really consistent is it the same phase is it the same phase like going uh, down to up and down to up like that then should this should reflect a very good uh, phase consistency and we don't know the phase actually but we just know that it's consistent among these uh, trials okay so what we can do to estimate this we know that our first trial is coming from a lot of vectors uh, rotating right and at this instant of time we have what we can almost describe as this so we would have a vector for this and a vector of that and we have at this time point we have an estimation we have an estimation for the magnitude and we have estimation for the phase but we would, what we would like to do is that we don't care about the magnitude we just care about the phase so the first step is to get rid of all the magnitudes so basically for every uh, complex vector that you have for every complex vector at every time point just we will define a uh, divide by the magnitude so when we divide by the magnitude we will get rid of this okay and we will be revolving inside a unit circle because now the magnitude is one okay so let's say that this is for the first trial and that's the second trial and we need to estimate this so the first step is to get rid of the magnitude and we are gonna average we said that we have our phase uh, values right we have our phase values so what will happen is uh, now we will get the average of this uh, phase values so we are going to estimate e to the power i theta for the first uh, trial e to the power i theta for the second uh, trial and so on for all trials and we are going to take the average of these so it will be e to the power i theta okay plus e to the power i theta of the second and so on until n trials and then we'll take this and divide it by n okay so let's for simplicity assume that we have two trials right now okay and let's look at this and see how this is really intuitive and reflecting a relationship uh, between the phase values okay so right now I'm gonna assume that this at this time instant our vector is here okay the question is what is the theta value when the, 
vector is like that it's on the x-axis the theta value is 0 right so here we would have 0 so it will be e to the power i 0 so all of this will be 1 okay and let's look at the consistency so let's let's take the average we have already get rid of the magnitude as we said so I'm gonna just sum e to the power i theta of the second one so let's assume that our second vector was here okay it was at pi okay so what would happen then then this would be e to the power i pi right so what is the value of e to the power i pi that's minus one indeed that's Euler's uh, theorem okay so we can actually say that this is minus one or you can actually just substitute in this one so this is pi so it will be cosine pi cosine so that's the projection on the x-axis as we said so you go pi and you project it here so that would be minus one minus one okay plus i sine uh, of theta so again the vector is here because it's rotating pi so what will be the projection on the y-axis yes it would be zero so this part would be zero so the result of this will be minus one so even if you don't memorize that this is minus one you can just get it okay so this would be minus one so it will be one plus minus one and it would be zero so this is really saying that there is no consistency between the phase values and the question is does this make sense yes it does because this phase is zero and this vector this vector is looking at the other direction of this one so they are not really consistent okay the phase consistency or coherence is here zero okay let's now assume another example what will happen if our second uh, vector is having the same value as the first one okay so right now we have a second a second one e to the power i theta but the second one is nicely aligned with this one okay it's very nicely aligned with this one it will be almost to this value right because the canonical segment is cosine and uh, that's phase zero when it's peaking okay but anyway if you if you don't know what I'm talking about that's totally fine but the thing is now you know that this vector is perfectly aligned with this one so in theory this should reflect the highest coherence between uh, the two trials right so let's say it's like that so right now our first vector at zero second vector at zero and we need to calculate this so will be i to the power i zero plus i to the power i zero because the phase value is zero so this will be one and this will be one right so it will be two and we uh, we said that we are dividing by the uh, number of trials we are getting the average so it will be two divided by two it will be one so what this is really saying is that if you have the same phase among different trials the maximum phase coherence value that you you might get is one and do not forget to get rid of the magnitude because right now the average or the magnitude that we are looking at will reflect the coherence and we don't care about the magnitude at this moment okay in the meantime if they are looking at opposite directions if they are not really um, consistent with one another this value will be zero so you we are talking about a value that ranges from zero to one okay zero means no consistency one means maximum consistency and by the way the chance level of this one let's say if you have some random effects in your signal it wouldn't be zero okay there would still be some consistency in the signal so keep that in mind and when you are trying to correct uh, your data or control for the effect that you see you might need to extract some periods uh, from your actual signal to control for that or do some uh, sort of other uh, analysis and the chance level is not 0.5 it's not zero you need to control for this with another uh, with another measure using uh, your signals from other uh, time periods okay 
So that's almost everything I wanted to talk about in the inter-trial phase consistency. Please go ahead and comment below if you have any questions and I will be happy if I receive any emails with questions and thank you so much uh, for watching.